Hey everybody, today we're going to look at my water system and we're going to go over what all these canisters do and where the water goes and what's what. Uh, the pipe coming out of the wall right there is from my well. So that's where the groundwater comes in. It actually comes down through here and that valve you see right there uh, leads to that hose and that basically just allows me to access my groundwater uh, before it actually goes into my system. This tank here is my x tank and that is where I get my water pressure from. There's a pressure bladder or a rubber bladder that runs across the middle of the tank and as the water comes in it pushes that bladder up which compresses the air above it and that compressed air is what gives me my water pressure. When the pressure gets up to a certain point the sensor down there sends a signal out to my well telling it we've got enough water and it shuts the pump off and then of course as the pressure begins reducing when I'm using the water and we get below a certain threshold it tells the pump to kick back on and start sending water back to the house. So once it goes through there and we've got our pressure in the line uh, this unit here is something else that's part of my RO system we'll get to that at the end. Uh, we go through here and up this line through this little pre-filter which is basically just a little physical pre-filter it's tantamount to a coffee filter we run into this first unit. This unit is my neutralizing unit. And if you look on the back, you can see I have that valve. And then these pipes go in, back out, over, and then down into this unit. So what happens when it goes through this unit and why is there a valve on it? This is my neutralizing unit and it is filled with a sandy-like material which is calcium carbonate and magnesium oxide and those are the neutralizing agents. Depending on how acidic the water is coming out of the ground and what you want your pH to be as it goes through your household is how you adjust that valve in the back. Now I have my valve adjusted wide open and that gives me a stable pH of 7.3. Uh, the reason we do that, and it's gonna sound a little confusing in a minute, so I'm gonna explain it beforehand. Um, you, I'm adding calcium and magnesium to the water. Now calcium and magnesium are what account for water hardness, which is what that unit right there takes out of the water. So why do I put it in before I take it back out? I put it in to neutralize the carbonic acid that is in the water. Carbonic acid is dissolved CO2. I've said before in videos, if you pour your water out and you let it sit overnight or you aerate it overnight, you very likely could have a, a fairly radical shift in your pH. It could get much more uh, alkaline overnight as the water degasses and all that CO2 comes out. Well, I take care of that right off the bat by neutralizing it right from the beginning. And I neutralize it with calcium carbonate and magnesium oxide. Now these obviously raise my water hardness to extremely hard which it then goes into this system and pulls all of that stuff I put in there right back out. So I've neutralized the water and then I've removed all of the stuff I used to neutralize the water along with anything else that was already in my groundwater uh, that would account for water hardness. Now water hardness is only a measurement of calcium and magnesium in your water so I could have a lot of other stuff dissolved into my water that this system will not take out. Remember, this is a water softener, it's not a water purifier. So I'm taking the magnesium and the calcium out, and there's probably a few little trace minerals here and there that come out along with it, and any cadmium uh, that might be in there would come out, uh, some stuff like that. But for the most part, it's the calcium and the magnesium. In this um, canister is what is known as an ion exchange resin. I have two different types. I have one that is a, an anion exchange resin and that is a uh, specific resin or a selective resin and it is specifically for pulling the nitrates out of my water as well. Um, the softening resin is actually a, a non-specific cation resin and that pulls the magnesium and a few other things out uh, along with the calcium. But the um, specific anion resin that pulls my nitrates out and I live in a farming sort of area there's a lot of runoff and so on and so forth so I get a lot of nitrates in my groundwater and the fact that I use the um, nitrate specific anion resin is important because I do forget to refill this canister from time to time which is full of salt and that is just regular old I throw this on my driveway in the winter it's sodium chloride and nothing more this is not marine salts it's not you know, driveway salt or ice melter, it's sodium chloride and nothing more. In fact, 
I got a bag of it right here. So that's all that is, is 100% sodium chloride. We'll get into what that does in a minute. However, getting back to my specific selective anion resin that takes the nitrates out of my water, if it was simply a non-specific anion resin, that also would take the nitrates out of the water, but what would happen would be, is if I ever forgot to fill this up with salt, which does happen, um, the first time I backwashed and everything got saturated, the um, resin would just dump. So I would actually be filling one of my fish tanks one day and suddenly I'd have 100 parts per million uh, nitrates because the saturated resin would, would dump its load back into my water system. The selective resin does not dump if it gets full. It just stops absorbing any more. So any nitrates that would be in my groundwater would bypass and go right on past all of the resin because there'd be nothing left for it to absorb onto. Um, but I wouldn't get a dump of everything that was still stored in there, and that's important. So that's why I use the selective uh, cation, I'm sorry, anion resin for the nitrates. From there, it goes into this. It's all treated, everything's done, it's as soft as it's going to be, it's got the nitrates pulled out of it, it's ready to drink. And then, just in case there's anything living in the water, I have a three foot long, very high intensity ultraviolet light, which is my bio light, controlled by this panel up here, and that sterilizes the water. That kills any living microbial uh, life that might be in there. The water then goes up through this line and on up into the house and that's where my all my drinking water and everything comes from. Before it gets there though, I've tied in here and we've run a little line into my RO unit. Now this is not an RODI, this is simply an RO unit and it removes about 90% of the total dissolved solids that are in my water. Um, I'll, I'll do a video all about RO one day. There's a lot of misconceptions about RO water and how it works and what it does and all that. Um, but this is an RO, not an RODI, and this line does go on down and continue down that way, and I have a uh, reservoir where I keep it. We'll do something different on my RO water altogether. This is just my water system that gives me my main water. I use the RO for very specific things, and again, we'll get into that at another time. So how do these resins work, and how do, what does uh, ion exchange resin mean? All right, the way these ion exchange resins work is they are little microbeads that you can think of just being covered with charged particles. Um, these charged particles, in this case, happen to be sodium ions. And as the water passes by, you have other charged particles that are in the water, these ions. And they are the sodium, I mean, they're the magnesium or the calcium. And what happens is there's sort of a... Uh, magnetic switch they will exchange places you'll it's not a one-to-one -one exchange and I'm not exactly sure what the numbers are so I'm not going to go into that but the long and short of it is is they exchange places the calcium and the magnesium end up bound to the resin and it knocks the sodium ions loose so I've got sodium ions in my water this is not the same as having salt in my water but it is sodium and um, if you have a lot of it, this, this is where you get into why I always talk about not using softened water if you don't really know what your softener is doing. Uh, I say over and over again, my softener is not really pulling a lot of stuff out of the water, and therefore it's not putting a lot of sodium back in the water. And I have about a 300 part per million sodium ion count, uh, and that's a guesstimate. I don't know that for sure. I am going to have my water analyzed at some point. Um, but I got about 300 parts per million sodium ions in my water and I know what that does and what, what fish that, that affects most severely and so on and so forth. If you don't know what you're doing and you don't know how much sodium is in your water, don't use softened water. In fact, if you're on a sodium restricted diet because of heart issues or blood pressure issues, you should not drink softened water. Um, again, it's not salty, but it's loaded with sodium and if you've got very hard source water and you're taking a lot of calcium and a lot of magnesium out of your water you're putting a lot of sodium back into your water and it's generally expressed in our hobby as parts per million but it can also be expressed as milligrams per liter 
And depending on, you know, your dietary needs, you could be putting more sodium in your diet with one glass of water than you do in the rest of your, you know, daily activities. So keep in mind, there is sodium in softened water. Now, getting back to my system, I know the amount of sodium that's in it because I know what I'm taking out. I know what I'm putting back in, etc. And that's effectively how it works. They just exchange places. When they get full and there's no more sodium ions to knock off of the resin, and the resin's full of calcium and magnesium ions or nitrates, depending on the resin we're talking about, uh, I backwash it and I run this brine solution through it. And this brine solution is loaded with sodium ions and it's so much more sodium ions than any other kind that the exchange goes the other way and all the calcium and magnesium get knocked off of the resin and it gets replaced with all these uh, charged sodium ions and now my resin has been refreshed. Um, all of the stuff that got knocked loose is in the backwash and that goes out and into my septic system and down through my drain field um, and out and away um, back into the world. So that's the long and short of it that's why my water is the way it is i'll get into the reasons why i use that and not you know the ro system and I'll, again I'll, i will get into my ro system and what that's all for and what i use it for and so on and so forth but i do have reasons for not using it in my tanks um not necessarily good reasons but i do have my reasons and i will get into them and i'll do a video all about ro and so on and so forth i'm trying to work us up into this uh total dissolved solids and water chemistry that i want to start getting back into uh talking about and understanding how my softening system works and understanding where all of the sodium comes from that i always talk about and so on and so forth might be helpful in uh understanding what's going on in my tanks as we continue on uh with this discussion so any questions, i uh, got the comment section below. You're welcome to leave them there. I will do my best to answer them and get back to you. Uh, in the meantime, you should subscribe so you don't miss any updates on this ongoing series. And I uh, thank you for watching this one. I hope it helped you, and I'll see you on the next one.